What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a WordPress powered website. Now the website I'm going to be creating is going to be a multi-purpose type website. You can use it for an everyday blog. You can use it for a business website, not for profit based websites, photo centric type websites and other types of sites as well. Just a very quick look at the front page. We have a large cover image over here. We have a nice image slider. We have the testimonial section. We have a featured page. We have a nice image gallery. We have a call to action section. We have the latest from the blog. We have some more featured pages. And this is very customizable. You can make this look pretty much however you want. Now, as you can see, I'm using a lot of images, using a lot of dynamic features. And one of the best parts is the performance grade that this demo site gets. And the results will be typical as long as you follow the same steps that I use within this video. All right, so let's look at Google page speed. Now this over here, this fluctuates. I get a 97 to a 99, you know, grade for this. So right now it gave me a 99 for the mobile and a 99 for the desktop. For Pingdom tools, it gives me a performance grade of 100, a load time of 1.11 seconds which makes it faster than 87% of other tested websites. I did test it with GT metrics, but the results were coming in kind of weird. So I got to debug that a little bit further because it gave me some mixed information from Google page speed. So I just went straight to the source and got the results straight from here. Now this is a Google tool. So getting a good grade for the page speed insights is going to be something that you're going to want to achieve. So by following this video tutorial, with the theme that we're going to be using, the plugins I'll introduce you to, and a couple of snippets of code that we're going to be using within our HT access file. And you'll be able to get these results. All right, so just a recap, this is the front of the website itself. Again, image slider, we have photo galleries, very customizable. Now in terms of the blog layout, this is extremely customizable as well. Here we have the masonry style grid. This could be customized to make it a full width or a default type layout with the content on the left and a sidebar on the right. You can put a large image up here. You can put a video up here. It's very easy to make it your own. So now let's take a look at some of the page layouts. As you can see, this blog post over here has a full width layout. One of the key features that I created within this theme, this is my Evo Pro custom theme, is the ability to really choose how you want your layouts to be configured. We also have our social sharing icons down here. Let's go to another blog post. Now this is a default layout. There's a two sidebar layout and you can put in whatever widgets you want within the sidebars over here. There's a left sidebar with the content on the right and we keep on going back and forth. Now this is the same for the pages and the post and the custom post types. You can choose the type of layout that you want. This theme has the template files in order to work well and to display your content in the way you want. All right, so that's the overview of this theme that we're going to be using. It's called Evo Pro. And later on in the video, we'll go through the process of downloading the theme and installing it. Now, you could use any theme you want. Obviously, the layout options will be different, but this video will show you in general how to set up a WordPress powered website. And then your site at the end of the day should have similar results over here that this site gets. And now I'm going to actually delete the website. I'm going to delete the database. I'm going to delete the folders that are associated with it. And then I'm going to go through the process of recreating this same website that we see right here. I'll walk you through the entire process. Also note, there's going to be a table of contents in the description section below. So take a look at that. So that way you can jump to and from the sections that you need to reference based on wherever you're at in terms of putting together your website. All right. So I'm going to go over here to my control panel. So inside my control panel, and I'm using cPanel for this, I'm going to find a database section. I'll go to MySQL databases, and then I'll delete the database. It'll ask me if I really want to do this, and the answer is yes. Once I do that, I can go back to the control panel. I can now go to the file manager, and I could delete the files that are associated with this website. I'm selecting them all then go into delete. So now this website no longer works. 
All right, so for the next step, we're gonna go through the process of what you would need to do to buy a domain name and get web hosting for your website. Now, there's a lot of web hosting providers out there. You can check out mine, which is shop.pixelweb.com. Then over here in the search field, you can type out the domain name that you want. And then click on search. If it's available, you'll get the good news this domain name is available. Then you can select it. Then from here, you can continue to cart. Once you're here, you can choose if you want to protect your personal information. Every web hosting provider offers this as a service. Pretty much what this does, it keeps a privacy setting on your Whois account. So when a person does a Whois search, they'll get the hosting provider's information and not yours. We'll focus on the hosting section. We can choose the economy option. Now this gives you 100 email addresses and that's more than most people are gonna need. So you could just skip over the next step over here and continue to cart. Now once you're in this section, you can choose if you want to register your domain name for two years. You can choose one year, or you can choose up to 10 years. We'll go with one year. And then for the economy, Linux hosting with cPanel. I do recommend Linux for your web server, and cPanel is a great way to manage your server without having to mess with a command line if that's not something you're interested in doing. So for this, you can choose to pay the 12 months in advance, or you can just go month by month. We'll choose that option. And as you can see, for less than $20, you now have your domain name and your first month of web hosting. This will be a recurring fee every month. There's $6.99. So then you will proceed to checkout. If you're a new customer, you would continue over here. If you're a returning customer, you would log in over here. And this is just to set up your username and password and to make a payment for the actual domain name and web hosting. The process is going to be similar with pretty much every web hosting provider. The thing that you want is to make sure you're running a Linux server. And if you're going to use a control panel, choose cPanel. It comes by default with the vast majority of web hosting providers. And it's an easy way to help you manage your website. So once you made your purchase, you'll get your username and password. You'll log into your web hosting account. Then you'll navigate to the cPanel section, your control panel. Now this can look different based on the theme you're using. Yes, cPanel has multiple themes and you can choose which one you want to use. But the sections are going to be the same. So from here, what we want to do is look for the software section over here. And then we're going to go to Installatron, Applications Installer. We'll click on that. And now from this section, you're going to look for the icon that says WordPress. There's a little bit about WordPress. We'll click on Install this application. All right, so once you're here, your domain name will be in this section. Then if you want to use a subdirectory, you can do that here. But I leave this blank by default because I want this to be my main website. So if we scroll down, we see the version of WordPress is going to install. The language, and you can choose your language here. You'll accept the WordPress license agreement. You can choose the automatic update, not to do it, or only to do it to new versions instead of minor versions. You can configure your settings over here for the WordPress plugin automatic update, theme updates, and backup schedule over here. Now, the thing you really want to focus on and you want to make sure you document and put in a safe and secure place is your administrator username. So copy that. And then your password. You can show the password there if you need to. And it's important that this be unique and extremely difficult to break based on a brute force attack. So you want something that's going to be over 14 characters, multi-character and multi-case. So for me, I'm going to be putting in my own password over here that I generated. It's a very strong password, and I don't use it on any other website. So make sure you have your appropriate email address. You can change the website title here. So I'm putting in my website title and the website tagline. And then you can choose to have two-factor authentication set up. We're not going to do this over here. In the later part, I'll show you how you can do it using another tool. Then you can choose to limit login attempts over here. We're not going to be using multi-site for this. It's a more advanced version of WordPress. And I have some videos on those as well. And then for the advanced settings management, you could just leave these to the default. It'll create a database for you. Email notification, default backup location, and automatic backup. So once you have that done, Make sure you have your username and password and that everything's set up the way you want. Click on install. It'll start processing it. It's going to install the files, the folders, and the database and tables. 
All right, so now you see over here, we have our domain name, and this is how you log into your website. Go to your domain name and then forward slash wp-admin. Let's go to the front of our website over here. And now we have the default theme installed. And we just installed WordPress with the one-click installation that's provided by shop.pixinweb.com. All right, so now we're going to log into the website. So again, we'll go to the URL bar, put a forward slash, and then wp-admin. You could also use wp-login.php. Those both will work. This is the login screen. So you're going to put in your username and your password. And now we're inside our admin dashboard of our WordPress website. All right, so over here, there's a couple of things that can happen. Typically, by default, you'll see the welcome screen. And this will give you some information on things that you can do on your website. We can customize the site from here. We can write our first blog post, add an about page, view the website, manage our widgets and menus, turn comments on or off, and learn more about this stuff. We'll dismiss it. If you ever want to get it back, it's up here. You can check that off or not. I'm going to check off the quick draft because I don't use that too often. If you need help, you could always just click over here and you can see some more information here. All right, so for the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take care of some of the settings when setting up our website. So we'll go to the settings area. We'll go to general. This is our site title and our tagline. If you want to change it, you can change it here. If you want to make your website a membership type website, where people can register to become a subscriber, you would check this off over here. The default role is subscriber and you should leave it like that. Then you can configure your time zone, date format and time format. Then once the settings over here look the way you want, you'll just save the changes there. Now for the writing section, we're going to come back to this a little bit later because we're going to create some categories. For reading, we're going to cover this a little bit later on too because we're going to choose a static front page. We could also leave it at the latest post and that's going to be fine as well. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use the static front page. The discussion settings. This is for pingbacks and trackbacks when new articles are published. If you want people to be able to comment on your website and what the rules are for those, you can say users must be logged in and registered to comment. You can say comments must be manually approved. And these are some other settings over here. We'll save those settings. We'll cover the media section a little bit later also, because we're going to change some of these settings here. And the permalink structure, I like using the post name for SEO purposes for search engine optimization. This is going to be the ideal format for your URL. So we'll save changes there. And now we'll go to our user profile. You can see all the users. We could edit our profile. You can choose a default admin color scheme. I'm going to enable keyboard shortcuts for common moderation. Now you can put your first name and last name. I'm going to put my nickname to be my name and the display name to be my name as well. Make sure your email address is good. If you have a website, you can put that here. And we're going to come back to this user profile a little bit later on because with the theme we're going to be installing, we're going to get more features in this section. You can fill out your biographical info. Now my profile picture is showing up over here because I have my email address. I'll show you a plugin that you could use if your email address is not associated with a Gravatar. If you want to create a new password, you can create a new one here. And then you can update your profile. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to delete some of the default items that WordPress prepackages when you first install it. So we have the sample blog post over here. We can trash it. In the pages section, we can trash that as well. See if there's any comments. Make sure the media is empty. See if there's any links here. Now this doesn't come with every version of WordPress, but since we use the Installatron, it gave us this capability. So I'm going to leave that there. Now we'll go to the appearance and themes. By default, you get three themes. So now we have the 2015, 2016, and 2017. We're going to delete the 2015 theme, and we're going to delete the 2016 theme. So now we only have this one. And then I'll show you how to upload and install the theme we're going to be working with. In the plugin section, 
it comes pre-packaged with the Akismet anti-spam plugin. We're not going to need this because one of the plugins I'm going to be using also has this feature. And this can really crowd up your database. So just delete this one. And this is just a sample plugin. It's not really a plugin. It's just something that WordPress installs on a new installation. So we're going to select those, bulk action, and delete, and apply. All right, so now we have no posts, media, pages are empty, comments, appearance. We only have the one theme, plugins. We went over the user section, the tools section. You're not really going to mess around with this too much. But if you're going to import a website that you have with, say, Blogger, or Live Journal, Movable Type, TypePad, or another WordPress installation, you can import it over here. If you want to export, let's say, all your content like an XML file, you can do that here as well. All right, so the next step that we're going to be going over is getting EvoPro. Now, that's my premium WordPress theme. Now, you could use virtually any theme you want, but every theme is coded differently. The layout options are going to be different. The features it has installed will be different. But the good thing about WordPress is that there's thousands of free themes on WordPress.org and thousands of premium themes that you can find out there on websites like my own. And the same thing with plugins. There are over 40-something thousand plugins on WordPress.org now. And you can also buy premium plugins as well. So we're going to go over to my website over here. I'll put a link in the description section. You're going to scroll down. You'll fill out the information over here. Create your username. Make the payment. Submit it. Once you do that, your user account will be activated on my website and you'll be able to log in to the back end of my website. And you'll go to a members only section where you'll be able to download EvoPro straight from here. You just click on the link, it'll take you to the download page and then you just download the theme. Now, if you want me to set up the website for you, I can do that as well. You would just order your setup over here, the themes included. And then when I do website setups, I also include other plugins as well. So if you want, you can always order your setup from me. But once you make the payment for the theme, you log into the website, you download it. Now we'll start the process of uploading the theme to our website. So we'll go back over here. We're going to go to the appearance section, themes. We're going to add a new one. So when you add new themes over here, these are some of the free themes that you see on WordPress.org. These are the featured themes, popular themes, latest themes. Favorites, if you're logged in or if you know the username of a, a WordPress user, you can see what their favorite themes are. You can even feature filter the type of themes that you want. But for this demonstration, we're going to upload a theme. And to do that, you will click over here. We would choose a file. This is the file right here. We would open it. Install now. Once it's installed, you would activate the theme. And you'll get a notification up here to complete the setup now and then begin installing the prepackaged plugins. Now I have the grandfathered license for lifetime updates and the ability to prepackage these two plugins with my theme in Vera Gallery and Soliloquy Slider. When we start installing the other plugins, we'll go over this part over here. But for completing the setup, when you buy EvoPro, you're gonna get a license key that you could use in order to get the updates right within your dashboard. So I'm going to go get my license email address and my license key real quick. So you just put in your email address and your license key there. Save changes. And then that notification goes away. All right, so let's take a general tour of the theme features in the admin section of your website. So we go over here, we see this link over here, EvoPro. And then you have some other submenu items here. So you can just click on the top level link. And this gives you some basic information, a very general documentation page for some of the things you can do with the theme. So you have the Evo Social Share, and it shows you what you can share with over here. The Headers and Footers Options section. This is good if you need to install any analytics code into the header section or any other type of code that you want to insert, maybe in the footer area. Then you see all registered short codes. This will show you the registered short codes. This is good because depending on the amount of plugins you're using, you might want to have just one location that you could turn to in order to see what short codes you have available. So that's why I included this feature. Then this describes the widget options that we have, the customized options, and the important links. Again, if you want a premium website setup, you can click there, the video demonstration, EvoPro documentation, the demo site, and support.
So this is for the social sharing options. This is going to display on your posting pages. You can check off if you want to have this displayed at the bottom of your content. We can save changes. The headers and footers. Again, this is where you would put your analytics code or any other type of code you want to insert in the head section or above the closing body tag. And these are the registered short codes. Now this list will get larger as you start installing plugins. And again, these are the important links over here. And now we're going to go back to our user profile. Go to your profile. And now we have more options down below. You can put in your title. Put in your telephone number if you want. If you want to put in your Facebook information, Twitter information, you can put that here. I'm just going to put in the pound sign just to have a display on the front end. So you see we have the Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. The bio information is still the same. And now we could update our profile. So now what I want to do, I want to go to the media section. And I'm going to start adding some photos over here. So I'm going to click on add new. And you could drag and drop your images over here if you want. So I already created a folder on my computer that has all the photos that I'm going to be using for this demo website. So what I like to do before uploading is I like using a local application. It's called JPEG Mini. What I do before uploading pictures, I take all the pictures that I want and I drag them in here. I already had optimized them so that's why I displayed it in that way. Now this is a premium tool so if you want to use the free version, you can go to jpegmini.com. You can go to upload photo and you could drag your photos here and then download the compressed version. And this is free to use. The website interface is free to use. Or you can buy one of their other options here as well. Another option is you can go to tinyjpeg.com. And this is a great service as well. So you can upload up to 20 images at a time. It'll compress them. And then you just download them. And this service is free as well. So that's jpegmini.com and tinyjpeg.com. So now I'm going to drag all those photos into my website. Now once all your images are uploaded, you can go into each image and you can start giving it the alt text that you need. This is important for search engine optimization and you can do that for all of them. You can also navigate up here as well. Once you have that all done, we're going to start installing some plugins. Now these images I got from pexels.com and I did another video where I show you 10 different websites that you could use to get free pictures for your website. It doesn't matter if it's a personal blog or a corporate type website. That video shows you where you can use their images 100% for free and their amazing pictures. So definitely take a look at that video. I'll leave a link in the description section and also in the card in the upper right hand corner. All right, so now we have our images uploaded. Let's start installing some plugins. As you remember, we deleted the other ones. We could add new over here. The first one I'm going to install, you may not need to use this, but if you already have your website up and you're changing from one theme to the next, you want to install the regenerate thumbnails because you want to make sure you're using the correct image sizes. So you just activate that and then you would find this over here in the tools section, regenerate thumbnails. Click over here and it'll start processing those images, making sure they're properly resized. Once it's done, if you want to go back to your media settings, you can change the thumbnail size if you want, the medium size if you want. I'm going to change the large image size. It's 1140 and 641. You don't need to do this part, but if you want to, you can already set these sizes yourself. So I just showed you how to install a plugin using the Add New and using the free plugin repository that WordPress offers. I'll show you another one. We're going to install this one. I'm not going to activate yet because now I'm going to show you how to upload a plugin. If you buy a premium plugin, you're going to get a zip file and you're going to need to upload that. It's the same thing as with the themes. When you buy a premium theme, you have to upload the zip file. So we're just going to upload a plugin. We'll choose a file. We'll open it. Install now. It'll unpackage the plugin and you can activate it from here, but I'm going to return to the plugin installer and through the magic of time lapse, I'm going to install some more plugins from the WordPress.org repository and some other premium plugins. And then once that's done, I'll show you what each plugin is.
Okay, now we can go to the install plugins. And we're also going to begin installing the prepackaged plugins as well. Go back to install plugins. Now, once you're done regenerating your thumbnails, if you want, you could deactivate this plugin and you could delete it if you want. You can go to all inactive. And now let me just walk you through what these plugins are. Matter of fact, I'll go back over here to all. So auto optimize. This is a great plugin that makes your website load faster. It concatenates your CSS and JavaScript code. It compresses it. It's really a good plugin. Backup Buddy, this is a premium plugin. This one I cannot prepackage, but I can install this on my client's websites. I have the license for that. And this is great for automating the backup process. You could send it to different locations. It's really a good plugin. In Vera Gallery, this is for your image galleries. EWWW Image Optimizers to optimize your images. Gravity Forms is one of the best and one of the most easiest to use form generators for your website. You can create virtually any type of form you're going to need. iThemes Security Pro. Now this is the professional version of the free iThemes Security. And this gives you some extra features like two-factor authentication and some other options as well. Now this plugin over here, the Lorem Ipsum button, this one you're not going to install. I'm just putting this here because I'm going to be putting in some placeholder text. And this gives me an easy way to do that for the demonstration website. But you won't need to worry about this because this is going to give you fake text. The regenerate thumbnails, we already went over that. Soliloquy is a slider plugin. And this is prepackaged with the theme. WordFence Security is one of the best security plugins you could use. WP Fastest Cache is an amazing and very easy to use cache system. WP Smush. Now this helps to reduce your image file sizes. WP Sweep, now this is for your database optimization. Think of it like defragmenting your computer's hard drives. And Yoast SEO, this is your search engine optimization plugin. All right, so let's go over here to the inactive. Check this box over here. It'll select all the plugins that are inactive. Go to Bulk Actions, Activate, and Apply. Now once you do that, you're going to get a bunch of pop-ups over here. We're going to close these out. So I'm going to take you step by step. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at, we're going to go to Settings and EWWW Image Optimizer. We're going to go here and we're going to start setting up our default settings. The first page is going to be fine. You can leave this the way it is. Go to the Advanced Settings. I'm going to put on four trials over here. And then we can go further down. And if you want to set a maximum width and height, you can do that over here. You could resize other images as well. Allow resizing of existing media in the library. You can do that here. Then if you want to exclude anything, you can do that over here. You can save your changes. Conversion settings. If you want to delete the originals from your server, you can do that. Now that's going to be good if you have limited space on your server. But choose wisely because that does delete the originals. You can check this off over here. Save your changes. And now we can go to the web P over here. I'm going to check this off. It does have some... Minimal quality loss for the image, but it's really not noticeable at all. And then you can check this off over here if you want. Then save your changes. Now I'm going to start putting in my license information for iTheme Security and for Backup Buddy. Once they're licensed, you get the check mark and you'll see they're active. If you want, you can enable a quick release. Save your settings. For Invera Gallery and for Soliloquy, they already have the licenses activated. Now for the forms, we'll go over here. We'll go to settings and we'll put in the license key there. And then we'll just go to next, turn on no conflict. We'll create our first form and we use this on the contact us page. From here, it's very simple. We'll go over here to the advanced fields. We'll grab a name. We'll grab the email address, put that below the name, take the website and let's just grab a paragraph field as well. We can make this required and we can change the message here. And if you want to put a maximum character count, you can update your settings. And now we have our first form created. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on how to use gravity forms because there's a lot of features that come with it. One of the cool things is you get a lot of add-ons, especially with the version that I can install because this is the top level version. 
Now, unfortunately, I cannot prepackage this plugin with the theme, but I can install it on my client's websites. And when I install it, you get all the premium add-ons. So you can have all these features that you can install on your website. And the beauty is, since I maintain the license, you don't have to worry about the yearly updates in terms of the licensing. And the same thing for Envira Gallery. They have a bunch of premium add-ons as well. A lot of these add to the dynamic functionality of your website. A lot of the features are really cool to use, like the Instagram add-on, Pinterest add-on. You could watermark your images. You could privacy protect your images. They have some stuff for photographers, like the Lightroom add-on. A lot of good features. And same thing with Soliloquy. They have a bunch of great add-ons as well. Now for the backup buddy, we're going to go to our general settings over here. Basically what you'll do is you'll put in your email address, create a password, choose where you want to store it at, and then save your settings. For the security, this is for iTheme security, we're going to skip this part over here. I'm going to disable everything for now, but I have a full video that I put together on how to configure iTheme security. But basically you get to do a security check, you can set your global settings, your 404 page detection, your way mode, banned users, local boot force, database backups, the automation process of it, file change detection, your file permissions. If you want to enable SSL support, you wouldn't need an SSL certificate for that. Then you have the network boot force protection, strong password enforcement, system tweaks, and WordPress tweaks. Again, you're going to want to enable these features and refer to the video that I created because it's a very detailed video and how to set up these particular features. Now with the pro version, you get malware scanning, you get privilege escalation if you want, password expiration, two-factor authentication. You could import and export your settings, which is a great feature. You get the recapture feature, user logging, version management, and user security check. So those are a lot of cool features. Now for WordFence, we'll go to the options. For now, I'm going to um, disable some of this stuff, the enable live traffic view. I'm going to disable that for now. And I have an older video on how to completely set this up. And I'm probably going to do a newer one as well. But it's very easy to do. You just go to the options and you choose which one you want. Whatever makes sense for your website. This is for the scans. Whenever you want to scan over here, this is the stuff it'll check for. This part's important as well. This is the rate limiting rules. What to do when people are trying to exceed a certain amount of pages being viewed. Login security. Whitelist your IP address and everything else. If you make any changes, save them down below. You can reload the page. And now we're going to go to the plugin section over here. These didn't activate for some reason, so I'm just going to check on them again. Apply. And now with the SEO section, we're going to go to the dashboard. You'll get any notifications over here. I did a full video on this one as well. So I'm going to jump through this very quickly. We're going to enable the advanced settings. Save the options. When you do that, you get some more links over here in the sidebar. You can look at your info, webmaster tools if you want to install those, the security setting. You get XML sitemaps, some additional social media features. But I'm going to go to the tools section here, and I'm going to go to the file editor. So this is your HT access file. So I have a code snippet that I'm going to be using in order to enhance the speed of your website. So right over here, I'll make some space, and I'll paste in my code. Now very quickly, what this is doing, this is setting the expires caches. Now these are items that typically won't be changing on your website, so it's good to set the cache settings for this. This will help you with Google page speed and with your Pingdom tools, and also will improve the user experience because it'll help to cache some items from your website. So I'll place this code snippet on my website so you can definitely just copy and paste it. It'll be a lot easier than trying to write this all out. So it's going to be from up here to down here. And you want to be very careful with the HT access file. You want to back it up first just in case you make a mistake because if you do something wrong here, you'll have a tough time accessing your website. You could also change the code from here on your web hosting control panel by going to the file manager. Or you can upload your HT access file as well with an FTP program. So I just put the code there now. I'm going to save the changes. I'm going to go back to the front end of my website and it still works. All right. No issues. 
And now we're going to go to WP Fastest Cache. We're going to enable the cache system. We're going to preload. We're not going to show the cache version for logged in users. We're going to choose that for the new post. We're going to minify the HTML, minify the CSS, combine the CSS, combine the JavaScript, enable gzip compression, and browser caching. We're going to submit, and that's it. Very easy to do. And now we can go over here to auto optimize. We're going to show the advanced settings here. We're going to optimize the HTML code. We're going to optimize the JavaScript code. You can choose this option if you want, or you can choose this one. If there's any issues, you can just uncheck them. We're going to optimize the CSS code. We're going to inline the CSS. And we're going to save changes and empty the cache. Go to the front of our website. Still working. You always want to test whenever you add a new feature. That way, you can identify when the issue came about. All right, so now we'll look at the WP Smush plugin. We'll go over here. And it says you have 20 attachments that need to be smushed. We can bulk smush now. We can recheck image. We can enable image resizing. So let's go ahead. Let's bulk smush. It'll process your currently uploaded images. Now that can take some time, but once it's done, you'll get the notification that all the images have been smushed. You can recheck the images. You see how much you saved. If you want to enable image resizing, you can do that there. You can do that there. You can smush by directory. The next step, let's create a slider and let's create a photo gallery. So we'll go to Solidicry. We're going to add a new slider. We're going to select from other sources. We'll choose from our media library. And for this, we're going to choose just three images. Insert into slider. And then if you need to make any changes to the metadata, you can go to each image over here and make the changes. We'll configure the settings. Now you can choose some of the add-ons, which will give you some more customization options. But I'll do another video just specifically for Solidicry, and I'll go over each of those individually. So I'm going to set the default dimensions. I know I want it to be 1140 by 500. We're going to set the dimensions on the images. We're going to set the slider transition to scroll. And then we're going to publish that. Don't forget to give your slider a name. I'm going to call mine main slider. Update it. And then we're going to go to Envira Gallery. We're going to add a new one here as well. I'll give it a name first. Main Gallery. Select from other sources. And for this, I'm going to choose like 10 photos. We'll insert into Gallery. We have our 10 images. If you need to edit any information, you can do that here. We're going to configure it. You can set the lazy loading there. You can choose the number of columns for the gallery. You can choose the layout row height and the margins. We're going to set the image dimensions over here. For this demonstration, we're going to put in 227 by 171. We're going to crop the images if needed. And we're going to set the dimensions on images. We'll publish this. And I'll do another video specifically for Envira Gallery because there's a lot of features that come along with it. That one deserves its own video in its entirety. Once that's done, you have your first image gallery created. All right, so now I'm going to create some basic pages. These are the typical pages you'll find on most websites. So I'll go over here to Pages. I'll click on Add New. And then I'm going to call this one the Home Page. We're not putting any content here because we're going to make this our static page. But you'll go down here to your SEO plugin. You're going to put in some meta description information. So you want to make sure this gets all the way to the green. So I'm going to type out. All right, so you want to make sure you get to this green section over here. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use it for my blog page as well. We have some template files that we could work with, but we won't need that for this page. And then we'll publish. We're going to add a new page. This one's going to be for the blog row. You'll leave a blank as well. We'll edit the snippet down here, change your meta description. We'll publish that. And then we'll just add some new ones. Now the beauty is with Envira, Gravity Forms, and Soliloquy, you can add a gallery directly into a blog post. You can add a contact form directly there as well. And you can add your slider anywhere within your content. I'm going to use that norm ipsum generator. I'm going to put in the fake text there. And above it, I'll just add an image. Insert into page. 
And then down here, you want to fill out the SEO information. So you'll edit your snippet. You want to make it as descriptive as possible. We can choose a different template for this one. And as you can see, it took the first image we inserted and made it the featured image. Now, if you're going to reuse this image on a different page and you want it to be a featured image, you're going to have to automatically set it over here. But that's how you can do that. We'll update that page. Now we'll add a couple more pages and I'll just time lapse this part. For this one over here, I'm going to add the contact form and it puts in the short code there for you. This is the contact page. All right, so now we have our pages set. So now we can go to settings and reading and we could choose a static front page, choose our home page for that and our blog page for the post page, save changes. And now we can go to our menus. So we go to appearance and menus. We'll create our first menu. Set it to the primary menu. We're going to select all these pages, add to the menu structure, and then you could just reconfigure it the way you want and then save the menu. And then we're going to create a new menu as well. We'll create the social menu, check off the social menu box here. We're going to put in some custom links. And we'll leave it at that for now, but you could add as many as you want and I'll give you a full list of all the social media websites that support. You could also put Pinterest. There's a bunch of them that you could put here as well. We'll save the menu. Now let's just go to the front of our website. And now we have our menu bar. We have our social media icons. We have our site title and tagline. And we're going to start filling this out. But first, we're going to start creating some posts. And then create a new post. And it's the same as creating pages. So I'm going to create one over here. And then I'm going to create a bunch of them. And I'll just time lapse it. As you just saw, you could just set the featured image over here as well, and it'll automatically insert it on the front end for you. Now, real quickly for categories, you can create new categories here. So I'm going to say lifestyle. And for tags, we'll put in. Now, typically, you want to use just one category for your blog post, and you can use as many tags as you want. So we have our blog title, the post title content that we're putting in there. If you want to add a gallery, you can. So we can put a cursor over here and we can insert that. We have our SEO title, our featured image. We could choose a template layout. We'll say full width for this one. We'll publish it and now we'll view the post. So now you see we have our featured image in a full width layout with our content and our photo gallery. All right, so now I'm going to create another post and I'll just continue doing this and I'll time lapse this process. And just to show you, I'm going to add a slider into this one as well. Now for your blog post, you're going to want to make sure that you have a significant amount of content. Typically you want at least over a thousand words and you want it to be high quality. So spend some time with your blog post. We'll publish this one. Let's view. And now we see we have the default layout. We have the featured image. And then we have our slider over here. All right, so now just speed up the process. All right, so now we have nine blog posts over here and we have our default pages. So now let's actually stylize the front end of our website and make this look like something. The blog post page already has this. This is the default layout and we can change this up and we will. So we go to the back to the widgets and I'll show you some of the widget options we have. This theme gives you a lot of different widgetized areas you can work with for the front page, for the sidebars, for below the content. Like if you want to put in some affiliate link information over here, you can do that. Take a text widget and just put in your information here. Front page, blog row page, full width layouts, half width, one thirds. 
And then we have some other options over here as well. So these widgets, you can place into the widgetized areas. The theme comes with a call to action widget, featured pages with no excerpts, featured pages with excerpts, featured post widget, your featured single page, and your testimonial section. And then depending on the plugins you have installed, you'll get some other widgets as well. So you have the form widget that's created by Gravity Forms, you have the Soliloquy widget, and the Invera Gallery widget. All right, so now we're going to grab the Soliloquy widget. We're going to put it into the full width centered box. Save it, close. And now we're going to take our call to action widget, put it right under that, type out some text here. and then the link to the URL. So I'm just gonna put in a pound sign for now. We'll save that. We'll close that up. And now we'll put in a featured single page over here. And then we'll save it. Matter of fact, we're gonna move this one over here down. We're gonna drag the testimonial widget over here. Put in another one. Now let's go to the front of our website. And now we see we have the slider on top, the call to action, and we have to move that testimonial over here. So we'll take that right there. And that's what we have so far. All right, so now let's get that large image towards the top. So we can go to the customize section over here. This is the customizer. You have your important links. You have the header area. We're going to work with the image. Add a new image. We're going to choose this one. And now we have the image there. we we'll go back. Make sure you're set to the image being the type that you want to display. Then put in your text. We'll go back over here and over here, go to our blog options. We're going to go to our blog row page so we can see the difference and the changes here. So this is the default layout. This is the full width layout and you can change around the excerpt length based on the type of layout that you're going to be using. You can make it longer, shorter, depending on what you want to display in the type of format. And then this one is the masonry grid. So we're going to choose this one over here. Your site identity, if you want to add a logo, you would set it here. And your site icon as well. The site icon is what goes up in the tab bar. Your colors, you can change them on the colors over here if you want. You can put the header and footer colors to be something different. The link colors as well. Main text color, secondary, etc. If you ever need to reset this, you can click on the reset button up here. If you want to have a background image, you can do that as well. You can select the background and it'll show up as the full page. Your menus, we already set those. These are also the widgetized location. So when you view this from the customizer, you'll only see the options that are available for that particular page within the preview screen. So when the blog will page over here, if we go to the home page, You'll see you now have some more options over here. So now we could actually just um, add some content here. So I'm going to go into the full width centered box section. I'm going to add a widget. I'm going to put in a gallery, a photo gallery. We'll save and publish. We'll X out. Make sure we reload. So now you see we have our large image over here. This is the cover image. This is the call to action our site title and tagline, our menu bar, social media links. We have our image slider. We have our call to action section. We have our testimonials. And we have the About Us page. All right, so now let's add some more stuff. We'll go over here, go to Appearance and Widgets. 
And then when you scroll down further, you have your photo gallery. We had put it in the customizer, but it took a second for it to display. Probably because of our cacheing plugins. So that's the Invera gallery. Let's right, so go back to the widget section. And let's say further down you want to have over here your featured blog posts. You can do it based on categories. You can do it based on any of the taxonomies or terms. So I'm just going to say latest from the blog. We're going to have it set to the small image sizes. We're going to split the post into columns. And we're going to show three blog posts. We'll save that. Scroll down. We have our slider, call to action, and the latest from the blog. It's coming together. And now what I want to do is I also want to FTP down all the images that I uploaded to the website and to the web server. Because when it processes your images in the media library, it creates other sizes. So I want to compress those and optimize those with my JPEG Mini. So I'm going to go to my FTP program. And I'm going to download this file, this folder, the upload folder. If you need FTP credentials, what you'll do is you'll go to your control panel, you locate the FTP section, and you will create your FTP account if you need to, or use one that's already there that you have. So right now it's downloading all the files, and once it's done downloading, what I could do is I could bring up my tool again, the JPEG Mini, and I'm going to drag that whole entire folder into that program. And as you can see, it needs to compress some files. And once it's done, you'll see how much space it saved you. So it saved me here, reduced the file size by 1.4 times, and saved me 3.3 something megabytes. So that's pretty cool. So now what we need to do, we need to upload those files and folders again. So I'm just going to upload the 2017. And for this purpose, I'm going to overwrite it. Always use this action and apply only to uploads. So now it's replacing the images that I already have up there. And once that's done, we can go back to the front of our website, refresh in the browser, make sure everything still works. Everything still looks good. All right, so now let's take a look at that blog page, see how that looks. See, we have the masonry style layout over here. Go to the services page, we have a full layout for that. The about page, we have the default layout. And these are the social share icons in the bottom. Go to the contact page. Now I'm using Gravity Forms again, but you can use Contact Form 7. I have a video for that. But if I install your WordPress website, then I can install Gravity Forms as well. All right, so it's coming together nicely. I'm using Open Sans as the font. You can choose to use Google Fonts or not. And if you don't want to, you can go to WP Fastest Cache. Actually, it's auto optimize. And over here, you can remove Google Fonts. And you can save changes. All right, so now we'll go on to the widget section again. And I just want to go over this again just to show you the different features it has. Again, your front page has a couple of dedicated areas. You have the full width edge to edge, full width centered boxed. Now your blog row page has a blog row edge to edge full width, a blog row centered full width. And then you can add some content below your blog posts. You have some half width rigid areas within your front page. One third rigid areas that you could use as well. You have some more full width rigidized areas. And then you have three footer areas that you could use at the bottom of your website. Now you could put your tag cloud there, you could put some important links there that you want. And again, you also have the call to action, the featured pages with no excerpts, featured pages with excerpts, featured post widgets, featured single page, and your testimonial section as well. Let's put a call to action over here on the blog row page. We'll save that. We we'll go back to the front of our website. Just take a brief look at this again. This is where you can upload a logo if you want to put a logo area over here. You have your site navigation bar, your social media links. Again, this large cover photo is optional. 
and you have your call to action over here. We have this nice image slider. We have our call to action section here, some testimonials, our single page, our photo gallery. I'm just scrolling through it with my mouse. We have the latest on the blog, and you can add some more widgetized areas over here. You have plenty of options for that. Now for the blog row page, we added that call to action section up here, and we could also add something else as well. If we want to go to the customizer, we can go to the widgets, blog row centered. We're going to add a widget. We'll choose the soliloquy. I'm going to delete this one for now. We'll save and publish. And now we see we have our slider section over here. With our blog row on the bottom. And again, this could be customized. And all this can be done inside of your customizer section. We have the important links over here. We have the header area options over here. We have the blog roll options, site identity, color options, background image if you want, menu options, your widgetized areas based on the page you're previewing, static front page, or your latest post. And if you want to add additional CSS, you can put that here. And you have your section over here for your social share, your headers and footers, registered short codes, your widget options, customizer options, and your important links. And now you see we have more registered short codes on our website. All right, so we'll go back to the front of our website. All right, we're going to inspect the element. I'm going to make it responsive. I'm going to see how it looks on an iPad Pro. So you have your site title and tagline, your navigation bar, social media links, the large image, the slider, your image galleries, latest on the blog. You see how it looks on a regular iPad? It looks good. On the iPhone 6 Plus. You see the menu bar collapsed. Now you have a drop down menu there. Let's see how it looks on a regular iPhone 6. And an iPhone 5. Alright, it looks good. It's fully responsive. It's SEO optimized. And it performs well. Again, on my website, I'll have the code snippets that you can copy and paste for your HD access file. Always make a backup first because just in case you make a mistake, you want to be able to revert from a backup. And a recap of the plugins that we're using. The main ones you're going to focus on are Auto Optimize. Backup Buddy is a premium plugin that I can install on my clients' websites. And Vera Gallery comes prepackaged with Evo Pro. This one's good for image optimization. Gravity Forms is another premium plugin that I can install on my clients' websites. iTheme Security Pro is another premium plugin, but they have a free version, and I did a video based on that, so definitely check that out. And again, this one I can install on my clients' websites. You're not going to use this Lorem Ipsum button. I just use this for demonstration purposes. And the Regenerate Thumbnails, once you're done regenerating your thumbnails, you can deactivate and delete this plugin. And you only need this if you're coming from another WordPress theme into this theme or anytime you change your themes. And the reason for that is because every theme is different with how it sizes the images inside of WordPress. It's all based on the styling, the layout, and the image sizes that it needs for the proper configuration. So Liliqui is another premium plugin that comes prepackaged with Evo Pro. WordFriend Security is an awesome plugin for security purposes. WP Fastest Cache does a great job of cacheing your system. WP Smush is for image optimization. Now WP Sweep, I didn't show you this one yet. I'll show you that now. This one optimizes your database. It's a really good plugin for that. And then Yoast SEO, this is a great search engine optimization plugin. I have a full tutorial on that one as well. So definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in the card section in the upper right hand corner. So these are the plugins that I'm using for this website. And this is how I get this score. Evo Pro is a very well coded theme uses HTML5 semantic markup and is properly optimized. And then too, I add the code snippets to the HC access file. I also optimize the images using my JPEG mini. And I also show you the free websites that you could use as well. And then I also use these other plugins that do a great job. All right, so now let's go to tools over here. We'll go to sweep. This is to optimize your database. It says you definitely should make a backup of your database first, and then you can sweep all and then it'll just optimize your database. All right, so now what about the performance? So this was the PageSpeed tools, PageSpeed Insights by Google, and this is Pingdom tools. Let's analyze this again. And as you can see, we just analyzed it. 
and we get a 99 and a 99. We just duplicated the process and the results with the settings and tools that I recommend and use. We'll see how we do with um, ping them tools. We see we had the performance grade of 100, load time of 1.1, making us 87% faster than all other tested websites. Let's start the test again. All right, and you see these are the results. We get another performance grade of 100. The load time went to 1.99 seconds. It could be because the time of day, the server load at this point in time. So this will fluctuate in terms of load time, but the results are good. We're faster than 71% of all other tested websites. And that's Evo Pro, the premium theme that I sell on my website. You can just go to pixelmerb.com, go to themes, and then you can go over here to buy now. Fill out the information, and then you'll be able to log into my website, download the theme, and you'll be good to go. All right, hopefully you found this episode helpful. I wanted to show you how to create a WordPress-powered website using Evo Pro and some of the premium and free plugins that I use. I also show, wanted to show you some of the optimization tactics, some of the tools that I recommend, and how I get things going with websites. Now, there's a lot more that I could do with this. There's a lot of customization features for this particular theme. And I'll probably come out with some other videos to create some very specific types of websites using this theme. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification icon down below so you can be notified when a new video comes out. And now you know how to build a rock solid, fast performing website that almost gets 100 from Page Speed Insights. Not bad. All right, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And congratulations. Let me know what other types of videos I should be creating. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Take care.